Okay, good morning. good morning. Well, here we are. You know, there's a, an ancient Chinese saying that goes something like this. May you be born in an interesting time. I think we're there. I think we're there. I'm going to talk this morning about self, uh, not self, I'm going to talk about esteem a little bit this morning. And here's what I've come to realize is that when you feel good about you, you have no need to inflict pain on another person. Right? And because the spiritual work we do in the science of mind is always bringing us back to, I am a spiritual being. I have a self. That self of me is that part that connects me to God. You know, it's the, it's the God love spirit within me. In fact, that self within me, that part of us that is God, we teach is the most true, most real part of us. And as a part of God, I am connected to the whole. Therefore, I don't do anything I certainly don't want to do anything that would be detrimental to another person. Why? Because first of all, we know it's wrong. Okay? There's nobody here. You've arrived at an age where you know the difference between right and wrong. We all do. We've known for a long time. And so to do something that would be detrimental to another human being, we know that is wrong. Second of all, this is the science of mind. It will come back at you with friends. Yeah. <laughs> It will return because there is a principle of karma involved. So that, that you put out to other people, it is, let's be clear, it's coming back. You may not see it right now, but it's coming. And, like I say, it usually brings friends. It doesn't come alone. It increases over time. You know, our life is given to us to create its meaning. We have to cobble together the meaning uh, in our life. You know, what in this life, what is it in this life that gives me, that gives my life meaning? I think we have to get over a lot if we intend to be happy. Because I don't know anybody who's on the face of the earth who hasn't been through a ton of stuff. Do you know anybody you know, who hasn't been through extraordinary things? And, and the truth is, we have to be the ones to get over what we have been through to move forward because nobody is coming. The cavalry is not coming. You know, a cowboy on a white horse, that would be the Lone Ranger. He's not coming. Um, you know, I used to love the story, the children's story of the shoemaker and the elves. Uh, first of all, because it's about shoes, okay? So I really, I was, I mean, imagine a fairy tale about shoes, okay? Like, wow, this is great. And, um, but you know, the shoemaker and the elves, the elves come and they rescue the shoemaker and his wife. Now, that's really sweet. That's a children's story. The elves are not coming. They're not. We have to be our own savior is what this points to. We have to be the ones to rise up, you know, from a prayerful, conscious, loving place and do what we are guided to do. Um, sacrificing yourself uh, to the point of detriment in hopes that other people will reward you is foolish, okay? That seeing yourself small or not much or holding... Uh, uh, holding back uh, really limits the expression of God. You know, when people say, well, you know, who am I to do this or that? Who are you not to? There's just as much God, just as much spirit, just as much love in you right now because you are an emanation of the Most High God as there is in anyone anywhere. We are each part of God. And so therefore, what this means for us as students of the science of mind is that the qualities, the attributes that exist in the infinite mind of God exist in all of us. Now, they may be potential. They may not be fully expressed. We may not be accessing them right now, but they are there. They are there. We are each unique expressions of the one infinite life. Irrepeatable. Isn't that good news? You know, so truly, it's really true. We've all heard this, that God broke the mold when they made you, when they made me. And we think, well, that is a good thing. You know, because there's only one of us. We are all unique expressions of one infinite life. And humanly, I think, you know, yeah, we're all this combination of chromosomes and characteristics and all of that stuff. That would be really hard to repeat. It's amazing to me how unworthy we can feel sometimes. You know, you are worthy not because of what you do. You are worthy because of what you are. And what you are is an emanation of God. Scriptures say, know ye not that ye are the sons and daughters of the Most High. Here, let me make it really plain. God don't make no junk, right? So that includes you. You are not junk. You, you know, God made you. Therefore, you have value. I have to put my eyes on for this line. It says, um, uh, oh, I don't know who said this, but I liked it. So I wrote it down a long time ago, and it, and it came up, and I thought, oh, this is perfect for this. It says, you have no idea what a poor opinion I have of myself and how little I deserve it. 
See, that's what people do. That's what people do. They have a really poor opinion of themselves. But you know, I said this the other night in our um, abundance workshop that, you know, um, God, like 35 years ago, I used to go see Louise Hay in West Hollywood. She did this hayride. And, uh, and it was a, a group that gathered uh, one night a week, and she would talk and share metaphysical truth and lead meditations and whatnot. And, and I remember something she said, and I remember it, it had such an impact on me when I heard it the first time. I wrote it down, and, and I've kept it all these years. And she said, true prosperity begins with feeling good about yourself. Now, here are the feeling good about yourself part, because that's what's really important. Loving relationships begin with feeling good about yourself. A healthy body begins with feeling good about yourself. Yes, pros pros true prosperity begins with feeling good about yourself, but creative expression begins with, meaningful creative expression begins with feeling good about yourself. See, this is the thing. If you don't feel good about you, then you will not allow good experiences, good people, good opportunities to come into your life. They may knock on the door, but you'll have the radio turned up so loud you won't hear it. You know, that opportunity say, well, you know, I just, no, oh, no. You have to feel good about yourself to allow things to come in that are meaningful, that are valuable. If you don't, if I don't, what it is like we put, it's like we deflect it. It's like we're telling the universe, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. You know, the problem is a low regard of our, the problem is people so often have a low uh, personal regard of, of themselves. And it's not spiritually accurate. God loves us. We are emanations of love. God's love is not earned. This is what grace means. Grace means unmerited favor. And the grace of God is upon all of us. That means that God loves all of us. If God didn't love us, we wouldn't even be here. So we've all heard, you know, um, that, uh, that God punished Adam and Eve for picking a piece of fruit in the garden. Okay, so do, you know, does everybody get that? For us, this is a metaphor. This is a teaching example. I mean, what kind of a loving God would banish you for picking a piece of fruit? You know, maybe an apple, maybe a pomegranate if you watch commercials on TV now. You know, but, but really, you know, actually, what I think this story points to is that Adam and Eve were created with free will and choice. And finally, they exercised it. And they ate the fruit. And what that did was that started all of humanity on its evolutionary spiritual journey. That up until that point, they weren't really doing anything. They were just hanging out in the commercials. You know? They were just hanging out in the commercials. But then, once they made a choice, that starts. And this is what we do again and again as spiritual beings, is that we make the best possible choice we know how to make in the moment. And then we make the next best possible choice we know how to make in the moment. I wonder, do we think that God rejects us for making a mistake? Because for not being perfect. Well, if that's so, then God has rejected everybody on the face of the earth because I don't know a person who hasn't made some mistake along the way. So you haven't done everything right. Welcome to the club, right? Maybe we're punishing ourselves, you know, and we think, well, if I punish myself, well, then God won't have to. Or if I punish myself, then maybe God will go easy on me. God is love, and that love is maintaining and sustaining the entire universe, not just our world, not just our home, but the entire universe. And this is where we have to learn to really listen to our hearts. God does not punish. That does not enter into divine consciousness. God is on our side. Right? So God does not stop loving us you know, when we make a mistake. So if God doesn't stop loving us when we make a mistake, we should not stop loving us when we make a mistake. Yes. Here is, uh, we all have to have a level of faith. You know, absolutely. You know, God doesn't give us more than we can handle. How many people have heard that one? God doesn't give us more than we can handle. And when do you usually hear that? When you have so much on your plate, you could just scream, right? And, we say, and people will say, well, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. To which, you know, my response usually is, well, God certainly thinks we can handle a lot, right? That's what it must be. But don't believe that if you've heard otherwise, you know, that God doesn't love you, like, you know, well, God doesn't love you when well, you do this, that, or the other thing. You know, imperfection... I think that the imperfections that we all have, uh, these are the wounds that 
that are the opening that we let God in through. You know, because it's in those areas that we go to a deeper place spiritually. You know, we're all human and divine, and it's enough, and it's a very interesting combination. You know, for many, there's this myth that runs them that, you know, uh, I have to be perfect for people to love me, and if not, they won't. You know, but humanly, we can't help but fall a little bit short of that, right? And then what happens is we convince ourselves that we don't deserve to be loved. But science of mind says you right now as a spiritual being, your essence, your core is that you are perfect. Yes, humanly, we all have work to do on the human plane. But science of mind teaches us that we are emanations of the love of God, that you are loved right now regardless of what you have done. You know, so thank you, God, that we can learn and grow and change and not relive the mistakes of our past. See, I think that too often we confuse what we have done with who we actually are. We are not the past. We have lived through the past. We have experienced the past. But we are not the past. We are all works in progress, under construction. You know when you walk by a construction site, and there's that sign out that says, you know, under construction. And it's like, I know exactly how you feel. I know, you know, I walk my dogs and I see those signs. I, and I see under construction. I go, oh, you and me both, you know. You may be a 48-unit condo, but here I am under construction just as well. Everybody is a work in progress. So maybe we're like, um, like an old silver tea kettle that's on the back burner of the stove. It's dented and dinged and doesn't look as shiny as it did when it was new. It's a little tarnished now. But... Conscious work on that tea kettle removes the crud. This is just like our mind. You know, when we bring consciousness to it and we start to, you know, wipe off those things that don't belong there. See, here's what it comes down to for me is that we have to esteem ourselves. We have to love ourselves, trust ourselves, respect ourselves. We have to put ourselves in a high personal regard. I'm not saying that we're better than anybody else, but we're certainly not better, uh, we're not worse than anybody either. You know, so we're not better, we're not worse. We're, we're all in the same human family. So I think, yes, we have to love ourselves and we have to act lovingly toward other people. How would I treat and think about someone I loved very, very much? Think about that in your life right now? How would you speak to them? How would you act toward them? How would you care for them if you love them very, very much, if they were absolutely precious to you? Be that way to you. Be that way to yourself. You know, people with no self-esteem, they can't take care of themselves. You know, we have probably been trained out of esteem. You know, because I think that babies have it. I think babies come in knowing they deserve to be loved. They deserve to be held and cuddled and sung to and fed and, on and changed and on and on and on. They just know. They just know. Mm -hmm. the science of mind teaches us that everything external, everything out here in the outer world of phenomenon is in the process of changing. It's all in flux. It's just an effect. So it's crazy to base our esteem on what is outside, mm -hmm. on, on things that we cannot control. Now, I know that's fairly normal, but... Let's tell the truth here. We're in church. Church, normal is not a really high vibration, is it? No, it's not. You know, it's like, hmm. So Abraham Lincoln said it like this, and I thought this was great. It's difficult to make a man miserable while he feels he is worthy of himself and claims kindred to the great God who made him. A man who feels he is worthy of himself and claims kindred to the great God who made him. We must claim kindred to the great God who made us. See, because you can't be your best when you feel bad about yourself. Right? That we have to take care of ourself, not just this physical self, but also our higher self. Because no one else will do it. Like I said, the cavalry is not coming. You know, and this is not about having a big head. People always think, you know, oh my God, he's just gonna be so full of himself, he's so full of hot air. Look, if you get a big head, Here's the bottom line. You get a bigger hat. That's it. That's all we do. You get a big head, you get a big... But, you know, I, so a friend of mine, a friend of mine uh, told me this story about um, 
Uh, years ago, there used to be these commercials on TV about hair coloring. And, uh, and, the, and, and the model would say, um, whatever it was, blah, 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 because I'm worth it. Right? Do you remember those? Because I'm worth it. And so my friend's mother would say, well, doesn't she think a lot of herself? And it's like, well, yes, that's kind of the point. What are you supposed to color your hair with? Old tissue paper? You know, it's like, no, I, mean, I don't know if you color your hair. I mean, look, and I'm in favor of anything that makes you feel good about yourself and does not hurt anybody else. Right? If it makes you feel good about yourself and doesn't hurt anybody else, doesn't go against anybody else's free will, have at it. Have at it, you know? But look, because God doesn't make any junk, you are worth the good, the good stuff in life. You know, so we're, we're talking about feelings and behaviors toward ourselves. Because, you know, with good self-esteem, what you find is that when people feel good about themselves, they are able to take the focus off themselves and do more in the world that helps and supports and benefits the planet and other people. You know, people who want to control us and tell us, you know, um, if we think about, you know, uh, ourselves, we're going to be uh, totally self-absorbed, I think it's wrong. I think they're wrong. You know, because I've taken time and energy to know a greater spiritual truth, uh, because I've taken time and energy to know that who I am as a spiritual being is worthwhile, what that means is that my tank is full and I can then give to others. Right? Um, so it happened again for me this week. This is, why, you know, this is why I do not bank online. I mean, I, I like to go into the bank because, first of all, I get so much material for talks. Okay? Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, if you just go and watch and keep your mouth shut, you learn so much, don't you? So I'm standing in line, and I went at a time. I knew there'd be a lot of people there, but I thought, eh, lots of material. So, um, so I'm standing, and, and sure enough, a woman is up at the, at the counter in the bank, and she has a total, total meltdown. I mean, bad language, and she's slapping the counter and just going on and on. Now, she was at with... Um, the littlest, newest teller in the, in the lineup of tellers, you know? And she was ferocious, not the teller, the, the customer, was just ferocious, ferocious, ferocious. Um, and, and she's stomping around and behaving badly and this and that. Now, you know, that poor teller just looked like a pile of yesterday's coleslaw when this woman walked away finally. You know, that teller was absolutely devastated and I thought, Ah, this customer has really bad self-esteem. Because when you feel good about yourself, you don't have to beat up anybody else just because there's a bank policy that you can't do this or that or the other. You know, if she had self-esteem, she would not have treated that person badly. You know, okay, so she didn't like what was happening in the bank. She's entitled. You know, so in which case you make an appointment and see the bank manager, or you, I don't know, go on Yelp and share your experience or whatever. There's lots of ways to handle that. But obviously, she did not like the way she was being treated. Okay, well, you're a big person here. We let you have a bank account. That means we think you're a big person, right? So act like a big person. Call the corporate office or something. File a complaint. See, I think we have to learn, we have to relearn how to think about ourselves and how that person we say we want to be shows up in the world, right? How to behave in a loving way toward ourselves and toward the world we live in. You know, I think we can learn anything. People can learn anything if they are determined to do it. It's all about practice, and this is process work. This is not about a goal or a destination. Pra living the science of mind as a philosophy, as a practical philosophy, this is process work. There's no quick fix on the spiritual path. To change, I think we have to first accept ourselves, you know, we accept who we are, hmm, so I don't know, but I kind of think that woman in the bank was being a big old, you know what? And, um, but the point is, if we catch ourselves in that spot that we want to be different, I want to be better, I don't want to show up in the world as a big old biatch, right? I want to show up as a loving, intelligent, conscious spirit, you know? Um, so we have, I think we, we must not define ourselves by our worst moments, right? So I, I'm going to guess that that woman in the bank, this was maybe one of her worst moments. Um, and I hope it was just a moment for her. I hope it was not one of 
many, many like that. But, you know, our heart will tell us that we're good, that we're lovable, that we're worthy, uh, worthy of loving and caring for, if we will listen. So years ago, Eleanor Roosevelt said it like this, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And it's always so interesting to me that people are so willing to consent. Why? Why are people so willing to get on board with, you're not okay, you're not lovable, you're not enough, you're not good enough, and we go like, oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, all right. That must be true. You say it so far. You must know. You must know. So for all of us, I think, you know, if we have any that we still hold, we have to give up the resentments. We have to let go of the disappointments. We have to, you know, stop with the blame because no good comes from it. No healing comes out of that. Our esteem increases when we don't see ourselves as this tragic, unfortunate who was wronged by life. Oh, it's been so hard for me. Well, tomorrow's another day. It'll be better if you bring a little new consciousness to it. So there's a scene in a Victor Hugo story where there's a ship in a storm and the crew here is crashing below deck. And what has happened is the cannons have come uh, untied on the lower deck. Now, a cannon that's loose on a ship that's in a storm is more dangerous than the storm. Right? Because the cannon, when the ship lifts one way and the other, the cannon slides to one side, and it can, it can damage and put a hole right through the ship. Right? So the greatest danger is not the external conditions of the storm. The greatest danger lies within us, and it's those things that are unhealed, whatever they are. And our job as students of the science of mind is to bring those things to the light. So we recognize them, and we express our desire that we want to be different, and we claim that we are better and different and more of our true spiritual self, let's go there now. Hmm? So we turn our attention inward together for a moment, just becoming still and knowing that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligent spirit is right here. And as we come together in consciousness, forming a big nexus of spiritual thought and prayer, we open our hearts together this morning and we send all of our love and all of our good intention to El Paso, Texas and to Dayton, Ohio, where this week tragedy has set up camp, it would seem. And so rather than have an opinion about it, let's know that God is fully present in the lives of all of those who've been affected in any way. And that what's taking place is a piece, is a cog in a wheel of healing that's turning right now. But yeah, sometimes things have to get epically big, epically ridiculous before we do anything different about them. And so right now what we do is we open our hearts and we send love and an energy of healing and blessing and peace to those areas where people have been affected to everywhere in our country where people are affected by any kind of disaster or tragedy. And then we open a little wider to include all people on the face of the earth, that wherever people struggle, wherever they suffer, wherever there's pain, wherever there's not enough, we claim that the spirit of the living God is right there, revealing itself in perfect ways as all needs met, as peace, as healing, as reconciliation, as a new beginning, and so as we join in consciousness this morning, we include our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear, and we remember that God is right where they are. And everything else that's taking place in the world around us, God is present there. We bless our church. We bless all churches. Synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. We bless them all. And I know we are blessed by being together that there's healing for all of us, healing for our world, for our country. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth right now, and I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen.